behind you, will you call the roll? Tim Raymer? Here. Dean Here. Dan Caffrey? Here. Rodney Ross? Here. Tom Holland? Here. Doug May? Here. Dan, will you leave some prayer? Right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together as a court, Lord, and uh, do the business of the county, Lord. Just pray that you just help us do your will, Lord, and just pray that we'll take care of the people that's elected us, Lord, and we thank you and praise you for everything you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Ken came from the city and also from the county. And he put his two cents in. And we had a very good meeting. It was alone in the day of the hive, but they walked around and looked at everything. And the ones they're surveying right now, they're getting the low points of elevation. Because when we had the flood, that's the reason they're going to every business, every site in Baylor right now. And they said it'd probably take me work from three to six months to get it complete. And uh, I talked to Bill McGee, and he's talking about maybe starting a renovation at the schoolhouse, make one. And uh, what's he want to do with all that, Scott? I, I, what's he want to put in that? I can't remember what well, I was He told me he's going to try to put high end uh, Airbnb. And the second, the first floor, he's talking about retail. And the cafeteria may be putting some type of restaurant in there. He don't know yet, but he, uh, that's his plan at this time. Okay. And for the gym, he's not really for sure how he's going to handle that. So he's going to do it in three different phases. And the gym will be the last phase. Good. And another thing I need to bring up, I'm getting several calls on the boat dock. I think the city and the county, even though the county owns it, the city's willing to help that we can dig out some of that up there and haul it up to the old water plant. People come up there and get the sand and whatever. And one fellow, he told me, he said he'd been to all 14 pools and he just asked me, he said, are you going to turn it back to the Indians? Well, I had uh, I had a complaint or two once early on and I thought we went up there, didn't we, Kevin? And did, they come with blood right after? And, and fixed it. Well, it right back in. And it comes That's another thing they don't understand. Well, that one time, Burrow went up there and cleaned it, then you all went cleaned it, and the water come right back up. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, hard. But they want some dug out on the bank right there. Yeah, we dug out four bank the last time, then that flood came up that day. Well, I just piped that all in. Some of it, we're going to have to take our inmates and... Uh, clean the dock up? Yeah, clean the dock up. It's going to take some. We can't take equipment or tire or something. I mean, that wood up there. We're we trying to get back that on that place where it's been scraped, it's got a hole in the pavement, they won't go back to be fixed. We'll try to get back on it. Uh, I just, I, I knew we'd cleaned it before and worked on it, but I, I didn't know it was back in that shape again. They worked point. all week on it, it come flood. They worked all week, finished it up on Friday, it come flood on Saturday. That's right. But that, it's sort of hard to explain that when people don't realize that once you clean it up, <laughs> And Burl, he'll take the back hole and so will Kevin. They go down the river and pick up that water and bring it back to the top and slosh it out and clean that parking lot off. I used to, now, back in the day, they used to take, they would rub it in with a back hole and then they would take a fire engine with a pumper on it and wash the dock off to keep, I guess, the planks from damage. That's what I've wanted. Is that feasible to do now? Or? Well, I've wanted to. Don't they have one of those pumps that they could put out in the river? And use that same water out of the river and wash that dock off? Well, yeah, they got a pump with that pump out of the river. I don't know. Well, the only thing I'm saying that right there, the lines are to the nursing home. When we pull from that hydrant, right. it takes away from the nursing home. Right. And the nursing home is number one to me. Yes. And I feel like that we, we need to take the pump. If we got a pump or something other, and pump it out of the river and wash that dock back off. I think they got a mini pump that they can fill up up there at the fire station on right there and mm -hmm. bring it down there and that way they won't pull so hard on that line. But you know how that line is right there? Yeah, it's, it's weak to say the least. And that nursing home has to come first in the water system. Those, those folks have to have their linen changed and everything daily so they need water. On the average, <coughs> forever person in the nursing home, they use approximately 315 gallons of water a day. I got that from rural water today. They come first. That's all I've got. Thank you, Scott. Dita here. Yeah. There she is. She's hiding back there. Dita, what do you got? Uh, there was about 300 climbers here last weekend. So the weekend before was kind of cold, but last weekend was really nice. They had a climbing competition over in Miller Fork on all day thing for people there. Uh, all the parking lots were full, license plates for, for the many surrounding states that even
French Canadian sales from Quebec and Ontario, and as far as from Florida, New York, and West, uh, that's <coughs> been here. Uh, we went down, Kenneth Isaacs and I, he, I usually pick him up at his house and we ride down Ball Rock Road and he helps me weed around the board, informational boards, and we put new information up to try to get them to come in this way and fill up with gas and eat in our restaurants and if they, if they need parts, come to our parts stores and our grocery stores and come and use our Wi-Fi uh, and things like that. So we got all that information updated for them. Uh, some things happened in um, last weekend. Also took a group of about 10 kayaking. We went eight miles. Uh, the first weekend in May, there's going to be another group here. Uh, they come from all different places around the state. It's a, a website called Meetup. So they put an event on there. They say where they're going to start. People register and pay. And they meet up at a certain place. And there's going to be 15 to 20 of them. So we're going to go from Moonville to Batonville. Uh, that's Saturday. Uh, May 6th, so that's the same thing as um, Also, the cruisings, uh, Main Street cruisings, the event partnered between the Main Street District and the, and the Tourism Commission, is going to be the first Friday night of every month, May through October. So you can shine up your cars, classic cars, and bring them down uh, for that. Uh, those events will be really fun. The farmer's market is getting geared up to move into the Barry Jackson building over here across from the post office. We're planning a grand opening event uh, with balloons for the kids and sampling, hopefully, and some live music uh, on Thursday, the 11th of May. <coughs> and also in June is our Bourbon and Moonshine Festival. It'll be June 16th and 17th. So we're looking forward. Thank you, Deidre. All right, uh, open comments. Anybody got anything to bring before the court before we go into our agenda? Okay. Uh, all right, let's go into the agenda. Lee County Conservation District, because Sandy Gage here presents the annual report to the fiscal court. Hey, you guys. Um, I've been around a long time with conservation, and uh, but my role has changed since I talked to you guys last time. I retired on uh, December 31st uh, from the Conservation District, working for them. Patty has stepped right up, and she's doing my job and hers, and Lee only. So we got one person instead of shuttling back and forth with Lee and Owsley, and Owsley County uh, hired themselves. They traded me in for a way younger model. Uh, <laughs> she's 21, <laughs> and her name's Adrienne Bishop, and she's a dandy, and uh, you all may be familiar with her dad, Jess Bishop. He, he does a lot of, he's done a lot of conservation work for us over the years, and, and uh, he does heavy equipment and everything. She's gonna work out just fine. Um, but so now, um, sadly, because of a uh, loss of one of our board members, uh, Ronnie Brandenburg, uh, there was a position open on the board. And due to the election and the way everything fell, they went ahead and appointed me to fill the next two years for Ronnie. So um, at any rate, so I'm here in a little bit different capacity. You guys know, uh, most all of you here, that uh, we're required by law to uh, work with the fiscal court, come and uh, do, do a little presentation once a year. And you guys are welcome to our meetings anytime. We would love it. Uh, they're all obviously open meetings, and they're the first Wednesday of every month um, up at the Soil Conservation Office uh, behind um, Walgreens and Dairy Queen. It's always at 5 o'clock on the first Wednesday of the month. Um, you've heard me say these things before, but I'm going to say them anyway. Um, we value our partnerships very, very much, and especially our partnership with the Fiscal Court. We've had this for years. You all have supported us, um, especially when it comes to cleanup activities, uh, the environment. You know, a lot of people associate soil conservation with agriculture, and we are. But 
we're also very, very in tune with environmental issues, natural resource issues. And the spring cleanup that starts tomorrow here. And um, that's one of the things that um, we uh, got a $10,000 grant uh, to do a spring and fall cleanups. So those open tops and all of that stuff, Mitch, when you get your bills, you just shuttle them. I started to say to me, but no, no, no. <laughs> they don't pay. You know, I'm pretty clear. But I know you guys are, are having conversation and everything, and I love that. <clears throat> One of the reasons I love this program is because we get millage tax money. Last year, we got um, $58,700 to run our office. That's payroll, that's computers, that's bills, that's everything. And um, people pay taxes, but they might not have a farm. So we're getting a little bit of tax money from some people that really aren't involved with farming or even some of the environmental issues. This way, they can take anything they've got up to that uh, county cleanup and drop it off, except for uh, the few things that Mitch met, mentioned. We don't want tires because we're getting free tire, uh, you know, getting rid of tires free coming up next month. But we, we can get rid of this stuff and anybody can participate, whether they have a farm, whether they do any of that or not. It's one of the things I love about it. It's an environmental program that people get to do it. And, and it's hard to get rid of some of that, that big stuff, you know. And we don't want it over a hill because over the hill means a stream at the bottom in Lee County everywhere you look. And we don't want, we don't want that pollution with our streams and that debris. We also do educational programs in schools and, and technical and financial assistance with our farmers and all that stuff. Uh, to improve their ag operations, soil, you know, soil conservation, all of that. Um, we also have a great partnership with NRCS, that's USDA, Natural Resources Conservation Service. They provide our office space for us. We have other bills, they don't, you know, we've got computers and thing, printers and, and our office supplies and things like that that we provide, and of course our payroll, but um, we don't have that overhead as far as rent. It's a big deal. We never want to lose any any USDA. You know, we lost our rural development. We lost several things over the years. We don't want to lose any of that uh, in Lee County. So we're right now we don't have one a, a full time person in Lee County. Jacob Brandenburg was the last one that was full time in our county, and he left to pursue more personal goals and. So they have promised us, the USDA, the state office has promised us they're, they're going to be taking applications um, and filling that position in Lee County. So I believe that. I believe that that's what they're going to do. Um, just an overview for what we got for our $58,700 $58, in millage tax money. Um, we have a cost share, state cost share program that is only provided through the conservation districts in the state. There's 120 counties, 121 conservation districts. Logan County has a north and a south. But um, we got our share this past uh, fiscal year 22-23. $175,798 allocated to our landowners. Uh, a lot of the focus is on manure and mud management and that sort of thing and keeping that out of the streams. Like I said, there's a stream everywhere that's heading right to this river out here. And we want to make sure that they're using best management practices as an incentive, it's a 75-25 cost share. So they get 75, up to $20,000 for their projects. Um, there were 14 applications that were approved by Kentucky Division of Conservation for Lee County alone. I'm really proud of that. The CAPE program, County Agricultural Investment Program, that one we had, uh, we just ran this past year, and we had 43 applicants 32 completed projects. There were two left on a waiting list that didn't get funded. 
and uh, one was not eligible, there is a minimum score of 44 points you have to have, and we had one that had 38 points, so he was not eligible. We had six cancel out of those that were approved, but we were able to trickle that money down, and were only two people that were left that didn't get funded out of, out of all the 43 applicants that wanted to do a project. Um, we already talked about the environmental grant program, the county cleanups, do one in the spring, one in the fall. Couldn't do it without the county. I mean, you guys are out there, you've got your equipment out there, you're helping people unload, we have our inmates that are coming to, um, you know, it, we're just, it's such a wonderful partnership for everybody. And Patty is on it, she's got uh, stuff in the newspaper about it. She's got stuff on our uh, Look Up Lee County Conservation um, Facebook page. We get a lot of hits on that. And so we try to have stuff like that for the county cleanup and the tire amnesty. I mean, anything we know that's going on with the county or, you know, we share, and then other people share it. So we have a lot of that. <clears throat> we have an equipment lease program where we purchased equipment that uh, landowners can lease for a nominal fee because they can't find in their budget to purchase all this equipment, but they can lease it, you know, $5 an acre to no-till your ground and that sort of thing. So it's, it's uh, we've got a lot of really good uh, things. No-till cedar chain drag, portable corral and head gate, lime spreader, manure spreader, ATV broadcast cedar to get to those hard to reach areas, especially if you've done any logging or anything like that. Those are all great things. We had a tree giveaway that started today, and uh, it was supposed to be today and tomorrow, and I mean, it was such a success. 600 trees, they were gone before the end of the day today. You know, people coming in, and, and even though Patty was, you know, trying to kind of limit, and, but, you know, how many people could take, I think some people don't realize how hard it is to plant 20 trees, how backbreaking it can be. But, you know, um, but we had wild plum, cypress, river birch, um, no, uh, no, those are, those are wrong. We had uh, black cherry, white pine, rough leaf dogwood. Yeah, that was, that was the one I had heard of, too. Coffee tree. And the coffee, Kentucky coffee tree, which is our state heritage tree. So those were all good. Um, we're working with the schools, we're, you know, uh, out there. We've got an um, environmental club out of the school. Um, with the spring cleanup, we've got several uh, groups. Uh, the conservation district is paying $100 a mile. So we've got groups, you know, the kids, you start talking money, they're like, okay, well, how can we help the, the environment, you know? So we've got, um, uh, Kentucky Mountain Outreach out at the Pine, um, what's it called? Pine Crest. Yeah, I keep wanting to say Pine Crest. Pine Crest um, uh, group out there. We have our Boy Scouts always doing awesome stuff. And um, I'm meeting with Pride tomorrow to pick up some more. Uh, we work out of bags, gloves, and vests and things like that. So I'm meeting with them. Do you have any extra if we could send anybody or pick anybody up here? Um, do you know Angie of the bags and gloves? You got some too? Okay, good. I called them and I said, we've got all these groups and I don't have enough supplies, you know. So they came up with some supplies. I'm going to meet them in London tomorrow and try to get some. So Mitch, if you've got anybody, you know, any groups, let us know. We'll make sure we get you some stuff. Our, the other part of us, as I mentioned, NRCS, USDA, they have allocated $292,000 to Lee County with, uh, with existing from 22, 23, and new approvals that are still coming. Some of them haven't even been announced yet, and, which is in addition to the $292,000. Lots of good conservation going on the ground. Uh, private landowner forest land improvements, conservation stewardship program, which is an awesome program for, for doing, following the best management practices and doing good things on your farm. You're rewarded 
uh, with the conservation stewardship, pro stewardship program. If you're not in it, you probably should be looking at it. Some of you that are involved, actively involved in farming. And um, uh, pasture and cropland prevention, that's our uh, planting cover crops, conserving water, that sort of thing. High tunnel projects, are you seeing them going up around in town? Uh, or I'm in the county, not in town so much, but that extends your growing season it, earlier in the spring, later in the fall, you know, it's, it's a wonderful group and, and it also helps promote our farmer's market and we want to promote that. Anyone that's interested in participating in the farmer's market, we want them to be able to grow. The more we can grow locally, the less is brought in. Why not the people locally, you know, getting, making money off of their um, ground, so, and their own food for their own consumption. So uh, it's a great thing. EWP, I'm not sure. Are you working on anything right now with EWP? I didn't think so. I didn't get any, couldn't get any information on EWP. So I guess we're on hold for that right now. That that is the emergency watershed program. It's another thing that goes through our office up there. And so there's a lot more going on in that little bitty office. And sometimes people think, and a lot more money that goes through it. And because we get that millage tax money. Uh, uh, 57 eight or whatever it was we got last year I said that's what's been going through hundreds of you know half a million more than half a million dollars going through so we just want you guys to know nobody's laying around up there certainly not Patty right now <laughs> and if uh, you need anything she's always available or you can call me anytime I know I took a lot of time but I just wanted you guys to be up to date on what's going on up there Okay. Okay. We're going to get a new employee up there in USDA. They're not going to leave us high and dry. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. Thanks. Next on the agenda, I've got a American Bloom to discuss a butterfly garden in front of the courthouse with benches. Is anybody here from American Bloom? I'm the, I'm the only one. We were all supposed to be here, you know, but I have an extremely short thing because I thought uh, Elizabeth uh, Cunniff is the president. And I thought she was going to be here. I'm the treasurer, so um, I, but I'll go ahead and tell you. One of the things we were hoping to do is, um, you know, of course, we uh, grow and plant the flowers on Main Street. And um, I think it's been as pretty as it's ever been over the past few years. And in the fall, the fodder shops and the mums and the pumpkins and all of that stuff is all done through American Bloom. Um, we do have membership opportunities, sponsorship opportunities, and we try to put a, a sign in there if anybody donated or anything. We want to make sure there are signs along the way to let people know um, about that. We were, we were hoping, we don't have anything set in stone, but we were hoping that we could do something here at the courthouse. Um, one thing was a butterfly garden, you know, plant a garden here at the courthouse. Um, with a monarch way station that would track monarch butterflies and that sort of thing here with milkweed and some of those plants that attract um, butterflies and put some benches and hopefully some pots out there and just make it inviting and you know as pretty as down along Main Street around the courthouse here. Not a lot of maintenance. I mean we don't want anybody having to do a lot of maintenance on anything like that. We take care of the um, watering of the pots, and we are asking the business owners to water the, um, I said, I meant we're, yeah, we're watering the pots. We're asking the uh, landowners to do that. We'll take care of anything in the ground. So um, we're, we're tweaking that right now. Had a great meeting uh, with the mayor and uh, Teresa Mays, the downtown uh, Babyville manager. And um, we're going to be attending more meetings. We, we want to make sure there's a better, a little bit better communication, I think, uh, through that. So we want to make sure that's happening. Um, of course, planning and decorating Main Street. At the nursing home, last year we put in a, um, a butterfly garden there around back. And you talk about your feel-good moment. Now, I'm telling you, they all came out. We did a butterfly release. And I mean, we had them, they had the butterflies on their hands. They were just like, it loves me. It doesn't want to, you know. And I mean, it was the 
best thing. And we had judges from American and Bloom, which are, na this is a national organization. We call ourselves Babyville and Bloom, but um, anyway, it was awesome. So we're going to do that again this year, and we'll let you guys know if you want to be a part of it. Uh, fundraising memberships and sponsorships for beds and pots. If you guys want to sponsor any pots or anything here around the courthouse, we would appreciate that. If you have anything for uh, any money aside for any of those kind of types of projects, we would appreciate um, you know consideration on that. How much is what is sponsorship? Well, there's several different ones, and I I looked in my folder, but I forgot to stick in the. There's a, a whole. String of things you can do. Two hundred and fifty dollars is the main sponsorship. Um, you know, with uh, the bigger pots and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you if you guys could do that, that would be amazing. But I think we have as uh, low as a fifty dollars sponsorship, depending on what people want to do. So, if you if that'll help, because we fundraise for all of it. We try not to ask for any money. Last year we didn't ask for any money from the city or the county. We just are getting out there, but you know, everybody's hit so hard everywhere you turn, oh, all these businesses and everything, and you know, you hate to do that, but we do want to beautify in front of their businesses and everything, and so hopefully as a result of that, they're, that's good for them too, so we're going to we're gonna try that, so if, if you all, if there's any way that you all want to sponsor or become a member or anybody, anything like that, it's from 50 to 250. Well, I mean, you can, if they want to get with me or something before the next meeting, we'll, and we'll present something. Okay. Is that all right? That's awesome. So that would be meeting, awesome. We'll, we'll talk about we'll it. We'll definitely do that. They left me high and dry tonight. Yeah. But I was already going to be here, so I went ahead and did it. But um, I'd like to see something happy talking about like that, maybe around the building up there. We're talking about some of that. It's talking uh, about doing cleanups up around the trail, too. Yeah, it's right around down up there. Like we'll, we'll look at that. That's a, I mean, that's a park. That, that's a place that we're trying to address one um, magisterial district or one park a year because it can get expensive. But but I'll see if we can't. I'll let them know that we were hoping to put that as a priority park to get started. I mean, all of our parks are. I, I, I'm a, They're all priority. I'm a supporter yeah, of all our parks. I know I you are. Parks for our people, I know our kids. I'm a big park guy for our family. I agree. Like and there's a lot of things that bring people up there. You know, the splash park and the Absolutely. ball fields and the Absolutely. community center. We appreciate all that. Anything that you guys uh, need, communicate with us. That's, really? we're, we're trying to get better at communicating. That's what we want to do. Have somebody stop in and we'll get something up for the next meeting. Okay, thanks for letting me dominate so much of your time. I appreciate <laughs> Thank it. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, discuss approved budget amendment number three in that pearl. Okay. It's in your all's folder. And don't let me forget before we move on to somebody else. I need you all to approve claims and transfers. It's, it's just not on the agenda and I don't want us to forget it. Just make you a note somewhere. We don't have to approve claims. I mean, okay. Um, we just need to review. Review. You know, but we need to do it for the agenda. But anyway, just, okay. This budget amendment. Uh, I finally talked to Robert Brown, and I, I think he will sign it. You all let me transfer 150 out of the road fund to the general fund. It is a legal thing to do to do administrative costs from the road fund to the general fund. In the past, I don't know that I've ever had to do it in Lee County. I might have done it one year. But I've never had to do it because the general fund was always on its own. The general fund is down taxes right now. We are in cash flow problems if we don't get to keep this money. So he told me to do the budget amendment if you all approve it, and I can keep that money in the general fund. If something unexpected comes up and I get lots of money in the general fund and we don't need it, we'll put it back in the road. This allows me to use it if I need it. Um, we had 300 that. We had 300000 in surplus in your road fund beginning in July 1st. I'm putting 150 of that to the general fund and 150 we're bringing into your road fund because your road fund needs money. You've had a lot of un 
expected expenses. Um, in your ambulance surplus, we had 13000 I'm bringing it into your ambulance fund because they need the money. Your solid waste had $42,000 prior to your surplus. They need the money, so I'm bringing it in. Um, that's pretty much what this, and on the ARPA fund, the city paid us back some money from that water project. I'm bringing it into your ARPA just in case we have to have it for the ambulance. Anybody got a motion to approve that or discussion? I'll make the motion. You want to make the motion to approve that? I'll say. Dino say. All in favor? Anybody vote? Approve the management. Uh, we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting too. I uh, skipped over that, so everybody's had a chance to look at the minutes and just the motion to approve the minutes. I'll make the motion. Dino I'll make the motion. Second. Ken second. All in favor? And will you all, will you all approve my transfers? I don't have a list in there. I apologize. Let's go ahead and approve the transfers Please. right now. Make a motion. Dean Thank make you. a motion. Rob the second. All in favor? I'll give you a list of them. Okay. I think I've printed it to the wrong print. Uh, discuss approved fiscal year 2023-24 County Road 8 cooperative agreement and resolution. And uh, that's the uh, the road 8 there. That's, uh, is that what we want the transportation cabinet on yeah. the road 8? Yeah. Okay. It should be in your folders here. And we went up to uh, uh, District 10 Highway Office and talked to them. Uh, been about three weeks ago, they give us the allocations and stuff that, uh, and they were just uh, wasn't on the money when, when we went up there. They said it's probably be a little bit different, but it'd be close. But I think they may have emailed and finally got the, the right allocation. The right. Numbers are so the numbers is in here that's right, uh, and that's what and they used to when I was judge before they'd come and, and present this to the court what they were going to do in Lee County, where they were going to put their black top, their recommendations, and things like that. So. Y'all had a chance to look at that. This is just what they recommend. And we went up there and met with them and had a good meeting up there. Why don't they do that no more, Steve? I remember Craig Lindy. They used to come every, every meet, every time, every year, Tim. And I don't know why they don't do that anymore, but they asked that we present it, so I, I just, we just put it in here. But uh, that's what they're, that's what they're uh, going to do in here this, this year or so. I know you know, Judge, when I look at it looks like to me, you know, we've got the allocation for the year, I think, 22. That's in your budget that your Hinkle guy is going to be doing with Kevin as soon as they open. Now, if I look at this, what it says to me is, and I will double check with Frank, is that I can put 407524 in the budget for Blacktop. I don't know when you can do it. That's that's what it says to me. Yeah. These two, they'll do. They're doing that, right? They, they, they do those. They're doing those. But this will be our lot. For the flex. Now these two here, that's, that's what the state's going to do? That's what the state's going to do. That's what, do. What's, what about the past two years, what the state is going to do? Better than this. Yeah. Uh, this is new. Better than this. Okay. This is the new one there. Yeah, this is the new. Okay. What they had for last year, they're going to do this year too. So they never got no other either. Right. So they're I think they're this. behind. Like everybody's behind. Right. Evidently, they was behind. Them. Yeah. But I, I talked to Reuben twice, and Reuben has assured me that we'll he'll make sure that we get our stuff done. Uh, so. Well, I talked to him this morning, and he's going to try to come to Bible and see you, uh, Kevin. Pearl and I, in the next two or three days, he opened Monday or two. He said something come up and they didn't make it last Friday. Yeah, he's supposed to be here Friday. He told me that tentatively, but I hadn't heard from him since then. I talked to him this morning. Good. We just need to approve this. I'll make a motion. Dean made a motion to approve that. Uh, Dennis said, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs> Uh, discuss approved. Uh, that was the county road agreement. And discuss approved the 2023 rural secondary 
recommendation to make my district's hand transportation cabinet. It's basically the same thing as what you're looking at there, just proving what, what they want to do. Dennis, make a motion on that. I'll second. Ken, second. All in favor? All right. Dennis stole it up first time quick, but. <laughs> 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 Discuss approve Operation Unite 2023 sponsorship 250. And they came down to the office and we're going to do a basketball camp up here with uh, one of the former, Joe, you remember the name of the guy? I can't think of his name. Jerry Polson, one of the former UK players. We're going to help her do a basketball camp. So you're right, man. I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> but, and they asked if we would do a $250 sponsorship to help out with that. I think all the counties usually do that for them and, and they go to kind of help that with some cost and stuff. I didn't think it was $250. Motion. Dino made the motion. Then a second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Right. Discuss approve uh, resolution 20 regarding Lee County Solid Waste five year plan for 2023, 2023 through 2027 and Angie was our solid waste coordinator so I think she'll be in the past, so she'll be talking about that. That's just our, our resolution that we're adopting our new management plan. The current one right now is 2022. Yeah. So 20, 23 to 2027. That basically we have to um, submit to them, like, you know, what we charge, to who, who picks up trash in our county, which is just the city and the county. Uh, we have to get a certification from the landfill of how many years they have a capacity. That. So we have to pass this and then we'll send the plan to Frankfurt and then they'll approve it to let us know if it's good or if we need to make changes. It's just our first step. We have to do this before we can submit it to me. You might have any questions or not. Dennis made the motion. Say for all the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You may vote. Judge, I was just going to tell you, this cooperative county road agreement, you know that's what we do every year.
think she's going to be a good dispatcher, but she'll just be starting out part time. I'll make that motion. Tim made the motion. Dennis second. All in favor? Aye. Approve a dollar an hour. Pay increase for Brian Dunn for obtaining, and Brian obtained his CDL license well, through the uh, train to obtain his license, effective April 13th. The uh, Beacon Safety with payroll making his new hourly rate of $15, which is what we start out the uh, truck drivers at. He's driving, uh, he's driving the garbage truck and he's Kevin Brian. Yes. So uh, that's just moving him up to what he should be making. I'll make that motion. Tim made it. Rodney second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Uh, approved full-time hire status for part-time for Nate Blair, effective April 13th, current rate of pay $12.50 hourly, no probation. So Nate, uh, <coughs> Dennis made that motion. Second. Dino second. All in favor? Aye. They opposed. Approved pay increase of $14 hourly wage effective to uh, 413 be consecutive payroll for Larry Ross due to change in department roles. And Larry, a newcomer out the bat to up the road department uh, at his request. And uh, this, is, this is just what his duties are now. It, it, it consists of what they're making up there. It's only fair to put him at that rate. Tim made the motion, Rodney second. All in favor? Before we adjourn, just want to maybe say a few things about I mean, what's coming up in the future, maybe. Uh, all of you know that our ambulance service has been running on ARPA money pretty much is what's, is what's supplemented the ambulance service for the last four years. Is that right, Perl? Different federal funds. But it's, they're all federal funds. It's, they're called different, but yes, federal funds, yes. Well, that money is dwindling away, guys. And we're going to have to make a decision here shortly. We just want to get it out there for everybody to know that we're going to have to make a decision shortly and do something different to, to create uh, some revenue to keep that animal service going. And, it, and we're running it right now. Herb, you know the exact figures of what? Like the ambulance services cost of maybe one point three million and bringing in eight yeah. hundred thousand in that area? Well, I if you look at your report, you can pretty much tell uh, through March, but it's over a million dollar enterprise and it's going to go up all the time because of people's wages, the cost of everything. But in 09, that is where you can look at your ambulance service and I I don't have some good glasses on, so I may have to borrow somebody's second pair of glasses. But anyway, um, I hate to tell you without looking. Hang on. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> Thank you. I do this all the time. Okay, let me get my glasses. And I can tell you. Okay. Like our fees through March, now that's what we get for runs, was 438 I budgeted six. So that means in order for me to make my budget, I'm going to have to make $161,000 between now and June 30th just to make the fees. Now I'll tell you what's helped us a great deal in the past couple of years. Medicaid did something. They said they came to some kind of agreement that they had underpaid us starting in 2019, I think. And so they're making it up. And they're giving us right now $11,000 and something dollars a month. Okay, that's extra with these fees. My understanding is after 24, that goes away. It won't be no more. So we have put into the ambulance service, like I said, they started out with 40,000, and that's through, I mean, they start, yeah, they started out with 27 at the beginning of this fiscal year. I budgeted that we were going to supplement them 254. Uh, I've already transferred in 254. I've, I've transferred in everything that I can. And when this budget amendment goes in tonight, I will transfer more. So you're looking, I mean, and like I said, you're, you've got to think about this 11,000 is going to go away. And that's 140,000 a year. So 140 and 254, and that's, that's not counting any new ambulances or anything. That's bare, bare nothing. 
So my budget right now is $998,000. That's almost a million. And in my opinion, it will, it, it's going to go over. Earl, why, why can't we keep this ambulance service budget under control? What is the biggest expense or uh, shortfall? Is it the billing? Your the salaries. salaries. No, your billing's great. Your billing's great. Uh, your runs, there. your runs is a hundred and something runs a month. That's that's not really a lot of runs. Here's what I was have been told, and I know me and Angie talked about it too, and Earl and just talked to different people. What I can gather is most of our runs are Medicare, Medicaid runs. I think what 80, 90 percent of our runs are that. Or, 90% of Medicare Medicaid runs. They pay about a third of what private insurance pays, is that right? 450, I think we're averaging 450 a run. So, and that's or nothing something. to what that run costs us to do it. And it put it puts these counties in a big hole. So once Medicare pays their part, then it's up to the person that we pay to pay theirs and you're not getting no, no, theirs. You don't, you don't, they don't get bills. They don't oh, that, get that's bills. all they, they pay, that's it. That, that's a rate. Well, that's what I met with Rand Paul's representative, being Blake, uh, a week or two ago, and that's one big thing I talked to him about is, is how that's hurt these small counties. Uh, the way they pay, I mean, you can't survive. We have to have ambulance service here. We don't have a hospital. Uh, so it's, it's even more important for us to have ambulance service here in the county. And you want a good ambulance service because you if it's my family, it's your family, it's anybody's family, you want to save lives. You want that life saved when you need that ambulance. So we we are trying to figure out the best possible way to do this. And there's no easy answers to do it. It's, it's not easy. We've talked a little bit about maybe throwing out the possibility of creating a taxing district like the Lee County Extension Board or the Lee County Libraries, their own taxing district, doing something. but. Well, we've been throwing out some different things, so we're just trying to come up with the best way. It's not it's not popular. A tax is not popular. I hate it. I hate to put a tax on anybody because I hate to pay them myself. But this is important for the county, and we can't let this go. I don't think none of us want to let this animal service go. I know you all don't. So we've got to kind of figure out the best way to do this. Private companies won't do them anymore. I just I seen about three weeks ago, Knott County, the, the company that was serving them sent them a letter giving them a 90 day notice that they were going out because of finances. Uh, Scott Locker from the health department, the district health department, told me that, that Wolf County had got a letter or, or their private company was going out of Wolf County. They can't make it. And if a private company can't make it, how's it? Cities and county, or counties going to make well, it. Is Wolf County out now? Are they out of ambulance? I heard them ask for mutual aid last weekend on the radio. I'm not they're sure they're out of my team, but I know they were going. And so it's <laughs> private companies. I remember when McIntosh done it for us back on the good before. He set my office and told me if anybody thinks there's any money in this, they would come talk to me because there's not. He went bankrupt two months after he took it over, didn't he? <laughs> but it's a but. I think we've got to keep it. I know everybody wants to keep it. We've just got to figure out. I want to put it out there to let you know that we're trying to figure out the best possible way to talk to Angie Pearl. You know, we've all, Jody Blake, we've all tried to put our heads together and figure out something to present to the court that, uh, that'll make sense, it'll keep our animal service, and keep a good animal service. I, mean. I can tell you I cannot do a budget with the animal service next year. Unless you got some kind of money coming in. Unless unless there's a miracle. There's no there's no way. We will be we will be we will be fortunate to operate in three months. We've never been given a straight answer on the the lawsuit money, the opioid money. We've never been given a straight answer. I will, I will call Rich Ornstein tomorrow to see if he can give me a straight answer if we can use that. Or, or not, or what? How much of it we can use, or not? But it's still not going to make up for what what we need. But it, it'll help us get through, hopefully, till we can do something. But it's coming up. It's coming up quick, and I just want everybody to know. I want the public to know that you know we're doing our best, to try, but we want to keep the service, and that's our plan to keep this service. I don't think I don't think we can let it go. And 
be doing the people right we're ready to go. Because we do, there'll be a lot of lives lost here in this county. Because we have no hospital to fall back on. That's all I had. Uh, I just want to bring it up there for the end. If they have any questions, I'll try our best to answer them. I just want to bring it up before we close the meeting tonight. I want to ask about the uh, park for Happy Top. Uh, are we opening that this year? Oh, yeah. Splash Park and the Hopi. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it already open? It's not open yet, no. I just I've had people ask me. I tried to contact Greg Watham the other day. Uh, I left him a message and everybody called me back. I, he's still doing it from what I understand. He's still helping run that from what I understand. He was doing it when I was good before. I just, I've had that people ask him if it's going to open yeah, up. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm proud of that Splash Park. We, we've done that back in the day. And I'm, I'm awful proud of that there. Uh, what we've done. Uh, people love that Splash Park and I like to keep that going. But it, it will be open. The opening date is usually Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend. I think at times they used to open a little bit earlier, but right, right around Memorial Day weekend, that would be about the time we'll do it. But Greg hadn't got back with me. Uh, I talked to Brian Dunn today. Brian said he actually helped with it last year and knows pretty much about it. So we'll, we'll have it open. We'll have it open. So, plan on that. To me, yeah, I'll put my <coughs> citizen cap on. That's this. Um, have the acoustics at Happy Top ever been addressed before acoustics? It's terrible. I mean, it's worse than terrible, Steve. It's just... Oh, I agree. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's a, I agree with well, you. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you can't have a conversation, a meeting, a speaker, a music, anything. It's we looked at that the last time when I was judge. I had a couple of guys to give me up what you could do. They were talking about putting carpet and tile and different things around there. And then... I kind of went out, I went out, I got beaten, I went out of office, so it just, I don't, you know, for the last four years, I don't know, but I know that with the grant, and I was hoping with the grant that, that they'd applied for, was supposed to be the million dollar grant, and this and that, that we end up, we was going to have to pay 200 and something thousand dollars on that nobody knew, but nobody knew about, but if, if they don't, they were reapplying for some different money to try to cover that cost. If that goes, I was figuring that when that's redone up there, that, that, that has to be a, that has to be fixed. But if that money don't come through, we can't go through with the senior citizen transfer project of moving that building up to senior moving senior citizens that building. Because it we don't have the money. But uh, so well, I've heard out outrageous figures, I guess done by professionals with professional materials, but something like hanging quilts or just well, attaching something to the wall came, uh, so the sound would not yeah. bounce, it would absorb. There was a guy that came to one of the meetings, I, I, don't, I think he filmed some of the meetings for us, and he said that we could build panels, you know, just build the frames and put uh, you know, some insulation board inside of them, cover it with some kind of fabric, hang those on the wall, and that would, you know, that would help it. You know, especially in the corners, he said, I mean, that might be something that we can build. Well, we need to wait and make sure this big money don't come in for this grant. If it does, we'll have to, they're going to redo that anyway, possibly. So, you know, that they, that could be fixed. If not, then I, we could try to come up with something for sale. But I know it needs to be it needs to be fixed. I, I've said that for a long time, but it's, it was always big money yeah. whenever I was talking to people just like you. Second. Rob the second, all in favor. Thank you all for coming.